Yeah, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to begin this lesson by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'asham Yahushai, Ba'asham Rocha Kodash, and double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Some lessons go to the elect. Right, this year is our one from the Great Millstone Camp in Trinidad, coming back to do another edification. To the Holy Spirit and power, Yahweh. Ah, Shami, I was shy. And I'm um, just going into the nonsensical theory. Um, which I did a video on it yesterday night, but when I re reviewed the video, I've um, said some wrong. So I scrapped that video, I'll do it over the next video. So the nonsensical theory of uh, slavery didn't happen. Transatlantic slave trade now. Before I say that, before I talk about that, I just want to say this. The so called white man in 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 his kingdom, eh? he literally living inside his kingdom. Right? Straight up. There is no doubt about that. Anyways, slavery happened, right? And I clearly to see now, like if you if you don't want to acknowledge slavery, that is your business. But the transatlantic slave trade took place. This is Deuteronomy twenty eight and sixty eight says, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, and there. You shall be sold unto your enemies for born men and born women and no man shall buy you, right? And that goes into slavery. And you can buy the other people saying that so called Negroes was over here in um, America before Christopher Columbus come. There was so called Negroes over here living. Um, because they're going into the all mex and whatnot now. Eh? Which I, um, I would say this: they had the Israelites over here, yes. Um, Native American Indians are Israelites. Um, so they were over here. So-called Latinos, they are Israelites. All right, they were over here, and predating them, you had King Solomon's and Hiram and Hiram. They, they both formed a league with two navies: King Solomon's navy of Tarshish and Hiram's navy. Hiram being a Canaanite, and um, he was a builder. He he held build the temple in um, in Jerusalem for King Solomon and um, they sent their people over here to collect all right um, gold silver it tells you in first Kings chapter 10 and 20. 20 to 22 all right so would there have been but this going into hundreds of years before it's going into thousands of years before christopher columbus so would there have been people of negroid features roaming this land or was there people roaming this land before King um so like before Christopher Columbus come over here who had Negroid features and would could could they have possibly left um remnants of themselves being here? Yeah that possible. So so let's find the old Mex and the city old Mex was Negroes who was always living here. But but the scripture said this you see, and, and this is the thing, the Bible has the answer for everything. 
Aïe. Where is it? Where is it? Second address. Chapter 13 and verse 39. And it says, And where is thou sowest that he gathered another peaceable multitude unto him? Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land. In the time of Hoshea the king, whom King Shalmaneser, whom Shalmaneser, the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land, and that another land would have been Assyria from they left Samaria, which we could get a history, because we we'll get at it real quick, right? Where is it? Second Kings chapter 17 i read from one it says in the 12th year of the asking of judah began hosea son of elah to reign in samaria over israel nine years and he did that which was evil in the sight of the lord but not as the kings of israel that were before him against him came up shalom and Asa, king of assyria which we just read in second Ezra's. And Hosea became his servant and gave him care presents. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hosea, for he had sent messengers to sow king of Egypt and brought no presents to the king of Assyria as he had done year by year. Therefore the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. Then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land and went up to Samaria and besieged it three years. In the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Hala and in Habor by the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Medes. So this history here, right? This history here. Where he placed them, he placed them in Hala and Habor by the river of Gozan. Right? Nineveh was in Assyria. You had um, this man. This story, Tobit. Right? Tobit was of that captivity. Um, what you name? To right, as I say, Tobit. Um, Jonah prophesying of, of um, the destruction and then ever told it was of that captivity right that so Tobit so it was real though it was no made up story so it was real right in the apocrypha verse 7 says for it was so that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord you see this is the this is the filter the holy scriptures it filters information and lets you know what is real and what is fake this is the filter the bible filter in your, your information it it, it 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 cleanses it because it's a true story it's a, it's a true book <laughs> for so it was that the children of israel had sinned against the lord their power Yahweh their power which had brought them up from out of the land of egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and feared other gods, and had feared other gods, and walked in the statutes of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel, and of the kings of Israel, which they had made. And the children of Israel, verse 9, did secretly those things which that were not right against the Abashim, Yahushai, their power, and they built them high places in all their cities from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced cities and they set up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree and they burnt incense in all the high places as did the heathen whom the Lord carried away before them and wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger right so the Lord letting you know what they did 
So now let me jump to verse 24. Verse 24 says, And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon, and Kota, and from Kota, and from Ava, and from Hamath, and from Sepharvim, and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. Right? So, what, what go on there? Is hidden, and this is where you get the uh, the belief of the woman by the well, believing that she was an Israelite, she was not. And our Lord, John the fourth chapter, our Lord, our Shai put her in a place and say, "You are not an Israelite." You go back in the history, you will read that. So now, when we go back in um, where I was now there in the book of Second Ezra, thirteen chapter, thirty nine verse. 40th verse says those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king whom Solomon had said the king of Assyria led away captive and he carried them over the waters and so came they into another land and we just read about what another land was and I and could read the story of Tobit Tobit was of that captivity that whether he fought whether he was a, a, a descendant he, he, he wasn't a big man in the captivity captivity, but he was a child and the parents and you know, but he get taken and went there. And then he had a child there and whatever. Alright? Or he was a big man. So you could you could read it. You could read it. Alright. Maybe better we read it. Tobit the first chapter, it will tell you. The book of the words of Tobit, son of Tobiel son of Ananiel, son of Adwell, son of Gabel, of the seed of Asael, of the tribe of Naphtali, who in the time of Enemenesa, the king of the Assyrians, was led captive out of Tisbe, which is at the right hand of that city, which is properly called Naphtali in Galilee, who above Asher, I told it, I too but have walked all the days of my life in the ways of truth and justice. Right. Could read through it. I, for the sake of time, I'm going to read through it. I'm going to read through all. But the history day. Now, Tobit is a part of that. The whole captivity of the um, Assyrians, right? So, quote Tobit, factual. And, um, Right, so the other land was what we read in Second Kings, right? So verse 41 says, But they took this counsel amongst themselves, that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go further into, go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. Meaning, nobody didn't come here and build up no cities. Nobody never established itself here. And live for hundreds and hundreds of years. The country where they're going into, mankind never dwell there. It never say mankind never set foot there. Mankind set foot here, over here, right? Mankind did set foot over here. Okay. And the mankind that set foot over here, you have the records of that in the Holy Scriptures when King Solomon sent. Because the place where never mankind dwelt was the west, western world is where they come. Where they eventually come. That would have that would be the Native American Indians, the, the Latinos, so called Native American Indians, so called Latinos. That is where the, that is where they came over here. But they got that navigation from King Solomon and Hiram, who used to come over here 
for gold and silver and precious stones right it says that they might dare keep their statues which they never kept in their own land and they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow places of the river for the most high then showed signs for them and held still the flood by the narrow places of the river and i believe when you go on a map you watch the euphrates it come from assyria to come uh, and uh, El it has a dark bar see break down that too to come around the horn and then they went down the sail down straight down from africa and then they had the cape horn in the bottom of africa the sail day and they come up and, and when you come up from around there, you're heading straight into South America. Yeah, you're heading straight there. And you could migrate from there. And you could go further and further up, Amer up north and wherever the case may be. Right? Some remain and, and the natives, they went further. <coughs> further up north. Right? For the most high, right, then showed signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half, and the same region is called Asareth, which means another land. Arataza, which means another land. That same region is called another land. And that is, that is America you're talking about. The America is South, Central and North America. So they came over here. But they got that navigation. They knew of this place already. They knew of this place already. And they said the most high held still the flood for them. <coughs> so they could pass. Because the Lord was guiding them to come over here. This book of 1st Kings, chapter 10 and 20, it says, And twelve lions stood there on the, on, on the one side, and on the other, upon the six steps. There was not the like made in any kingdom, and all King Solomon drinking vessels were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold. None were of silver. It was nothing accounted of in the days of Solomon. For the king had at sea a navy of Tarshish, that is King Solomon's navy, is a navy of Tarshish, alright? To who he had, what nations or people he had on the navy. We, we, um, Tarshish, when you look up the word, is ham, as a Phoenician people. But we don't know exactly, it could, people could have been, you had to put yourself back then, too, in the sense. It could have, um, you know, a mixture of nations. It could have Hamites. You could have bring this man who walk. You who walk, you a good soldier, you jump on. You, you, know, you understand? That he navy, at, he had a navy attached to go and bring things for him from this land, from the land. With the navy of Hiram, Hiram has his own personal navy as well. And Hiram as well could have the my people, but he could have, if it had a Moabite leaving land, or, or Elamite leaving and, and looking for work. And, yeah, son. Is that no new thing under the sun? But maybe the majority would be of uh, your people, right? And, and Hiram navy, whatever, right? I'd say, what? Well, once in three years came the navy of Tashish bringing gold and silver and ivory and apes and peacock, peacocks. Why is it once in three years? We just read in the book of second is just, namely of a year and a half that trip would have take to make. So once in three years, the Navy Atashish come in. The just the Navy Atashish. So what would go on within that three years with Hiram's Navy, they would have stayed in Asaret, gain the gold, gain the silver, right? Gain the peacocks, right? Getting the ivory, getting the apes. 
so that when the navy attaches come load it up and go back so it's a year and a half to come a year and a half to go that is three years so it was talking about over here so were there people over here already before um king solomon and no Salah, before the natives and them came over here to live and settle yes they were people they were people of negroid descent so-called negroid features right so there were people but what the scripture say never mankind dwelt they never settled here and stay here they they, they 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 went back to the hub which is the known world at the time because after that all things things was happening over there normal after king solomon you had empires rise up and whatnot so they went back over there you had the Medes, the persians you had the babylonians all of them things they, they was the hub man never come here and dwell here and build up here the hub was the east, so they went back to the east. We don't know. When the work done, the work done, how long did it take for Solomon? About 20 some, 21 years, some made it, to build up his house, his house, and the temple. So after work done, they pack up and they go back. And then when the natives came over here, they settled. Right? They settled over here. And then, because of second is just king christopher not king christopher christopher columbus talk to king ferdinand and queen isabella and tell them about a voyage to come over to the new world to set it up and he came over here with the lord you have a basha me have a shy and all help him come over here right so that being said now i brought all of that out to say that slavery right definitely happened because they are the native americans over here around well around some 720 something bc they left assyria with after the destruction and never well probably before so like and they never get destroyed and they left they came over here and they live here and they live here and they live here and they you know what for a thousand almost almost two thousand years right before christopher columbus come and they're doing what they had to do living and however they live they live some of them live like Edens, whatever but the so-called negroes now in a big way they ruled Europe after the fall of Rome being becoming Moors right becoming Muslims which is freaking basically um I believe the Moors are Muslims the Moors was Muslims if I'm mistaken becoming um Catholics and rule in Europe because Rome fell and they took over the so-called Negroes rules rule Spain that Portugal but prophecy was taken place at the same time Revelation the 20th chapter goes into all that right Revelation 21, it says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is called the devil, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. So the, that goes into Rome being bound. Bound meaning going into slavery. Meaning you're insignificant, you cannot set up no rulership. You bound, you are servant, you cannot be a king anymore. And Rome, the Romans, the Edomites, they were kings. They cannot be kings anymore. They cannot be sovereign. They were bound. And in the time of that being, them being bound, so-called Negroes took over the known world at that time. So-called Negroes started to sit down as emperors 
of the Roman Empire, the Western Roman Empire. One main man is uh, uh, um, Marcus Aurelius. I believe he had Nova as well, right after the fall of Domitian. He had Septimius Severus. Yeah, his son Caluc um, Cara Caracalla. Right? This is the Western Roman Empire. Then you had the transition, I believe it's Diocletian. Um let me see. This is the history, history that they don't teach in school. Right? I was looking up a map of um Holy Bombo Dario Cletian. He was a Roman Emperor as well. Dario Cletian. Let me see what he did. Former Roman Emperor Dario Cletian nickname Iovius was Roman Emperor from 284 to 305. Born to a family of a low status in the Roman province of Dalmatia and originally named Diocles. Diocletian rose to the ranks of the military early in his career, eventually becoming a cavalry commander for the army of Emperor Carus. I think he separated the two empires. Diocletian's reign stabilized the empire and ended the crisis of the 3rd century. He appointed fellow officer Maximian and Augustus. Right. Diocletian reigned in the Eastern Empire and Maximian reigned in the Western Empire. Because the Eastern Roman Empire started to form. Right. Diocletian delegated for the march, boom, boom, boom. Under the Tetrarchy, a ruler for each emperor would rule over a quarter division of the empire. Secured empires, borders, and bulls from all shots. He defeated the Samaritans and Kafi. Right, look at here. Diocletian separated and enlarged the empire's civil and military services and reorganized the empire's provincial divisions, establishing the largest and most bureaucratic government in the history of the empire. Yeah, so like, yeah, all that, but, um, I yeah, call it, but Diocletian, I believe, if I'm mistaken, a whole lot history. Right? But I believe he was the one who passed separation in the empires, east and west. And the east, stand part of Rome started to pick up real steam, and that way Jake was mainly ruling in the east. In the eastern part of Rome, and our key name is Constantine the Great, which was a so called Negro. And, um, yeah. The taken, the took it over, and the Edomites started to go down more in power. And um, Jake was ruling, and Jake ruled, and the rule, and you had Jake living in Western Africa. He took over one game, and he took us over from him. He, uh, he took me down in the Western part of Africa. He took us down, and then. Uh, no, no, hidden history. What the fuck, you know what? I don't go and do some. So I'll come back with part two for this. Shallow one.